Hello, Charlotte here again. How are you? Right, now we're going to have a little look at doing trees in the distance and also a foliage canopy quite close to the viewer. So what I've done is I've started with a very simple tree shape. So this was just using a mid-tone brown and I did that just to save a little bit of time because I want that to be dry before starting my, my leaves. So if you've got a specific tree shape that you're going to put leaves on, do your tree first and don't worry about the ends of the branches because you're going to be putting lots of leaves over. Now you might recognize the background from my easy clouds video. Um, all I've done here was to add in a one coat of green, one layer of green, just with a little bit of a hill shape. I'm going to put some far away trees on there so you can have a good idea of what you need to do to vary the scale when you're looking at trees in the distance, trees in the foreground. Of course, it's all to do with, with scale and working out where the light is every single time. Now, before starting the doing the foliage, doing the trees in the distance, just want to point out that anything that you're painting from the, the natural world, from the real world, if you want it to look realistic, it's just a case of understanding what it is you're seeing, what it is you're looking at. And it's always, always a jigsaw of light and shade every single time. If you need a little bit more instruction on that, I've got some drawing videos which really go into depth about what you're seeing and how to help you see things more clearly with that jigsaw of light and shade. Now with leaves and trees, what you tend to notice are the, the leaves that are lit by the sun, lit by light, you get to see those shapes and also the silhouette of the tree against the light or against an object behind it. That's what explains to the eye the nature of the leaves, the shape of the leaves, being able to distinguish what they are from the different types of trees. So what, next time you're out, actually have a, a look at, at the trees, have a look at the leaves. And the more you look, the more of course you understand how to build up your, your painting. But what you will notice is not just the bright leaves that you see, but you if you look in between all of the leaves, of course there's the depth, of the whole canopy of the tree. There's a lot of shadow, a lot of variation in tone in the gaps in between the leaves. So that can feel quite confusing when you're starting to paint. Well, how do I get the, the gaps in between the leaves? And some people start by painting the bright leaves first, which isn't the right way to go about it. You want to always think about doing your paintings from the back forwards. So if you think about a tree, with all of that depth and the all of the leaves behind the tree that you can't see, but you see the shadows in between. So we actually start with the shadow in between the leaves. So just a block of shade and then gradually get lighter until you really see the bright leaves that are picking your, your eye out. Picking your eye out? That sounds awful. But your eye is picking out. That's more like it in the, in the natural world. So just start with your, your simple tree shape. I, I just have a thing about roots. So I've got a nice little root there going in over the top of the grass. And I'm using the, the very simple palette of primary colors that we have in class. If you're not in one of my regular classes, all of these paints um, are listed on the, with the YouTube video, but basically just a really simple phthalo blue a mid-tone red, like a cadmium red and a cadmium yellow, and lots of white. So the first thing I'm going to do is to establish where the shapes of the trees are going to be and the, the canopy of leaves with that shadow colour. So I'm going to make up a purple, so a bit of blue, a bit of red. I'm going to need a fair bit of it, so I'll make up a largish quantity. Purple, but I don't want it to look really just stark purple. So adding, oh, I keep forgetting how runny that yellow is. Adding some yellow into the purple. You might find, depending on how much blue you've got in your purple, it will look quite greenish. So just add a bit more red. The red and the yellow just help to start swinging that purple a little bit towards the brown scale. And I want it to be slightly more brownish than really purple. 
for this this shadow so i've got a, a really dark 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 color here which is actually verging on 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 black but that will create an amazing shadow depth now i'm going to put some trees on the horizon here and uh, all sorts of um sort of shapes and layers and just as you can see i'm using quite a large flat brush now this is just to establish where all of the shapes of the trees are you definitely don't have to be specific with these shapes this is to establish where the the area of foliage is going to be so we're going to have some nice nice trees all along that hill line and you can see how sort of bluish blackish that is in relation to to the brown which is just going to be ideal so a little a nice sort of rolling rolling canopy and you can tell straight away can't you just by the way that i've put the the outline if you like the silhouette of the the, the first layer of shadow against the blue of the horizon there you can see how by altering that slightly how different that looks to the eye so if i make that a little bit um jaggedy like this then straight away that looks like a very different texture than the areas up here which are much more rolling so the most important part of your your paintings when you're trying to deal with realistic objects it's the point where the light meets the dark so here where the 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 light is behind and really silhouetted the against it is the front area of trees this is where the the texture of an object is explained and described to our eye now we don't need it to be quite that that spiky I'm just going to soften it off a little bit because it's quite far away. So you always have to think about, about scale and distance. So of course the trees that are going to be in the distance, they are going to use smaller marks than the trees that are in the foreground. I'm just going to build up that a little bit bigger so we've got a good area to work on. Now here I'm going to use exactly the same purpley colour. Now this time, even though it's much closer, I'm still going to use very, very rough, loose marks. You want to be able to feel like you can be free with this and do it quickly and have some fun with it. And I might start around the edge, the edge here, covering over the ends of some of these branches. Now, this is where it's quite helpful to have perhaps a, an idea in your mind, or maybe you're working from a photograph of the actual shape that you want the, the tree to have. Having a perfectly round or a, an angled tree, and if it creates um, a square or some sort of geometrical shape can really stand out. So here I'm actually just going to start even scribbling it in, scribbling in, and do this with a, with a much bigger brush and make it really, really quick. Just having a few bits of branches poking through. Of course, if you run out of paint, just really quickly make a new batch. And I know that that is the, the bane of all the artists' life, having to remake colors. I hear that from my students all the time. They never have enough color, but you just get used to mixing, mixing more and mixing it quickly. Okay, so you see, just putting lots of splodges in. This is basically the, what you're seeing in between the, all of the leaves, all of the shadows. And it's got quite a, a steep angle there, hasn't it? So I want to make sure that I don't have too geometrical a shape. The eye loves a pattern. So I want to try and keep away from making anything look unnatural okay so I've got more of a curve which is slightly uh, irregular and that's going to work just fine right now there we already have the basis for all of the leaves that are going to be going in all of these these tree forms in the foreground and in the background now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to swap over brushes because I don't want to have too much of that purple in there and this is still wet, but I'm going to keep working with the wet paint. And you should be thinking about four, maybe five layers with your, your trees. But these, again, they're going to be done really quickly. 
and it doesn't matter for the first three, maybe the first four, that the paint is wet because you will still get some really interesting uh, variations in the colour which can look even more natural. Now the most important thing to understand from here on is where the light source is, where the light is coming from. And you have to make sure that the light is consistent across your whole painting. So because it's a sunny day and the tops of the clouds are lighter than the undersides of the clouds, let's say that the sun, the sun is out and it's uh, above. So we're going to think about a canopy where the, the light is, is hitting the top. And that's something that some people can find a little bit difficult to picture in 3D if you don't have a photograph in front of you, being able to understand, well, if this was sticking out from the, the canvas like a, a real tree, like how would I get the light to, to look, make, to make it look like it's, it's realistic and it's not just a flat shape? Because you don't want to just be putting light around the outside like a halo because it's, it's a, it's a three-dimensional object. So the light would be hitting it in all kinds of gradations coming down through the, the front edge of the, the picture, through the front edge of this canopy here. And that's, that's the challenge. It's working out where the light is and then how do you replicate that? So when you're out looking at trees, just start really looking at where the light hits the, the branches, the leaves, and the shape of the shadow that is left behind. Now I'm going to start with, with a very, very dark green and work my way up. So just this, this phthalo blue is, is very potent, but I want quite a lot of it and a little bit of yellow in there. That's slightly too bright actually for my first layer. It's a really dark foresty green. And of course, sometimes the leaves you do are not going to be this, this pure and bright green. You might have some, it might have an autumn picture that you're doing and of course you would alter the, the colours accordingly but I'm just going to go with standard green leaves to nice bright sunny sunny green. Now this colour is not going to stand out very brightly against the, the dark purple that I started with but it is going to start making some difference. Now starting on this side because it's further away I'm going to think about again that the sun's coming down on the top and this is probably lots of different trees uh, in, in a row and the, the brush marks you always want to start at the top because that's where the light is hitting first it's not hitting down here first obviously the top edge is going to be catching the sun so you want to make sure that your your first layer of light is always covering over that top edge and I'm just doing light light blobs and now I'm starting to form some roundish shapes that maybe these these trees let's say that they're quite round curvy curvy trees and I'm I'm literally doing little little dabs and blobs blobby blobby dabby dabby it's that that easy just to create the impression of what you're looking at this understanding what it is that you're seeing so I'm not covering over all of this dark purple but I am covering over most of it and with each layer of light you will gradually cover less and less of the tree shape as the light hits fewer and fewer of the leaves as you get lighter and lighter. So that the key with this and you might not be able to see but what I'm doing is I'm actually twisting the brush as I'm going because I don't want to be creating an exact uh, replica of the brush mark each time. So all the time I'm twisting the brush as I'm dabbing. Otherwise you can get quite um, a regular looking sort of potato print. And as I said before, you know, the eye loves a pattern. So you can, if you do something which looks too unnaturally regular, it's, it can really stand out a mile. And, and you want to make sure that you're creating something natural looking which won't have that sort of precision. So you see what I've done with this edge? I've started to just fuzz it slightly because these trees are really far away, but you would still be able to tell that there's a, a variegated, slightly textured edge. And that's one of the clues that our brain has that these are, these are trees and it's not a concrete wall. You know, that there's, there's a little bit of, variation just in that 
that edge, that top edge, against the against the light, against the horizon. Okay, so just putting in. Now it's a relatively even line at the moment, a little bit caterpillar. But as soon as we start making it lighter and lighter, you'll start to see how the forms of the trees emerge. Now exactly the same on this one. I'm going to use the same colours, so I just need to make up a little bit more of it. Now this time, I'm going to repeat the process. I'm using much bigger brush marks, but I'm still working in the same way. So I'm starting on the outside. Blobby, blobby, dabby, dabby. I think that might even be a official art term for it. And again, I'm varying the lines. I'm not doing them all in the same way. You see how that suddenly stands out because all of the lines are going in the same direction. The eye loves a pattern. So vary the way that you, again, I'm twisting the brush as I'm, as I'm placing it onto the canvas and just going really quickly as the, the brush hits the canvas because I'm doing it quite hard and quite fast. It's uh, expanding the bristles. So I'm getting a variation in thickness of paint as well, which is, which is really good. Now here, I don't want to be filling in all of the gaps. So I want to make sure some of that purple is showing through in between, but I am being very mindful of the fact that I, I want to cover up most of it. So I'm thinking about my five layers. So a great deal of that is going to become, in essence, this, this dark green over the top. But we're still going to get little peaks of the, the purple just showing through. And I realise that this is, is quite a, a regular looking tree at the moment still. And we will get to the light and the shade on the trunk, of course, later on. Now I'm just going to vary that a little bit. Perhaps this is sticking out a bit more. And of course you can keep altering the shape of your your leaves, the, the overall shape of the foliage as you're going. And you'll probably find that you overdo one of the elements of, of tone. You might find that you put in too much light and that's fine because you can just go back in with a little bit of dark. I'm just going to, I've just got my other brush. I'm just gonna add in some dark because I've extended the little branch area there all of those leaves, I want to still repeat the same process so that doesn't look any different to the rest of the, the leaves. So just adding then in over the top. So that would just make it a little bit more interesting as, it, as it's coming down. Perhaps just a few, few leaves there. All right, now you probably can tell straight away even though you can see the, the size of the trunk, but this is much closer than those, simply because of the silhouette that we're seeing. And that's really, really key. So my next layer, adding in more yellow this time. So we're starting to get a little bit more sunny. Now I'm thinking a bit more carefully about where the light is. So just getting a good little mix. Doesn't matter if you don't mix the color perfectly because it's going to be blending in anyway with the wet paint that's there. So remember, start at the top, start at the top, and I've got the brush at right angles to the uh, canvas. So I'm really just stabbing at it with, with very small, fast marks. I'm thinking about some of those, the curves that are appearing in these bushes, or these trees on the horizon, and of course, this technique can be used for anything which has got a really dense structure and uh, anything in, in the, plant, the plant world where you've got lots of small elements that aren't perfectly straight. For grasses, I've done a separate video which just shows about how to create grass. And that's uh, in a very, very similar way, but of course you're dealing with a different kind of mark because the grasses are straight, whereas these are much more textured looking. And just building up even those shapes on the horizon there, creating that little bit of, can you see how now there's a, there's a sense of some curves forming through these, these shapes just by varying, varying the light and the shade. 
So I'll leave that one there and go again, same colour, same process, start on the outside, blobby, blobby, dabby, dabby. Now this is where I'm starting to think, okay, if there was a, a three-dimensional canopy here, then this would probably be sticking out in a curve and catching the light and there would be quite a lot of light coarse on the outside. So let's make this one of those areas and remember keep, keep varying the angle so you get that lovely naturalistic look, varying the angle of the, of the brush. Keep thinking well there might be a little bit of light just popping through some of these some of these spaces and all the way around the outside here varying the light as the brush is picking up some of that dark green that was from our earlier layer I just need to make sure I'm mixing up enough of the the lighter tone to keep this layer looking bright and so I'm just going to bring that in front of the horizon so I think there'd be light catching through here so this is just a very generic generic tree, a little bit abstract in, in nature with its, with its leaf shapes. Of course you can vary the way the leaves look, maybe they're much more pointy, spiky, and it would all be the variation would be created at this, this edge. So perhaps if you have very small spiky leaves, you will want to make sure that the edge is very spiky. If they're much more round, you would create a, a rounded profile. But these ones, I'm just going to think of them as generic leaf shapes. Now here, this, because even though it's, it's quite close to us, this is starting to get away from the, the real light source. But maybe this, there'll be a bulge here. Uh, there wouldn't be much light reaching down to that bottom area, though. So just a bit of light catching onto that. So that's, we want to make that look like it's curving out is just about to do with the variation of light and shade that's what creates the sense of, of 3d so that looks like it's starting to curve now and we've got a definite sense of, of of shape and variation through here now the next layer you know what's coming lots 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 more yellow now this time I'm just going to add in a touch of white now when you're making light greens you don't just want to add yellow on its own unless you, uh, sorry, you don't just want to add white on its own unless you're going for that really minty look. But I want these to be warm and sunny. So when I'm adding my white in, I must offset that with a little bit of yellow to retain the warmth of the green. And so I'm getting quite a, a limey color, but the uh, white will also help to make the paint nice and opaque. All right, now, over on my, my far away leaves, what I'm going to do is actually switch to a slightly smaller brush because I don't want all of the, the marks to be looking exactly the same and the light will be hitting fewer of these, these bright leaves. So I've just swapped to a smaller flat brush and now again, always start at the outsides. And because these layers of paint are still wet, I get a really, really nice little blend. And this is where I'm thinking about some of those shapes of the, the trees, of what they would be looking like if they were actually there. It can also help if you even scrunch up a, a ball of paper and look at, at where the, the light will be hitting, you know, a round but scrunchy object, just to get a, a sense of of, of what, what these might look like if you find it difficult to, to imagine, imagine them. And that's absolutely fine. It's, it can be really hard to work out the, the light and the shade and, and how to create a shape when you haven't been, been doing much painting or looking at landscape in the way that you need to for, for uh, painting it or for really understanding what's happening with, with, with the light and why the light is, is so important. Again, be really careful not to make every tree shape look exactly the same, even though the light source is the same. Maybe there's just a bit of variation. Some of these are slightly, slightly bigger. Now I'm doing fast, fast blobs and dabs. Just with the slightly smaller brush makes the, the marks smaller. 
but they still are looking far away and starting to get the a real sense of, of shape. So you can see it doesn't have to take a long time to build up a, a really effective impression of, of natural objects. And remember that for most of us, although you want the painting to look very realistic, you want people to be able to tell what it is. You don't need to create something photographic for it to look, look real. It's just understanding that jigsaw of light and shade and the kinds of marks you need to make to replicate the textures of what, of what you're looking at. So you see how that is now coming together very nicely as, as 3D. 3D forms and shapes, sort of undulating on the horizon there. Now, if you wanted to make them look even further away, of course you'd have much smaller marks, so you might even not see the, the individual blobs and dabs. But this is, uh, it's, it's on a horizon, and I want to be able to, to see some of, the, some of the marks to make it look a little bit more interesting texturally. But for it to look very, very far away, what you would do is you would just blur in all of those so you can't see any individual, any individual lines. And you see how different that looks to the bit next to it? So it's, it's about just changing the mark for your uh, focus, for what's, um, what you're actually able to see. And of course, if you, if you put too much on and you feel like you need to... Uh, edit. I'm just picking up some of the, the the dark green that I still have on my palette and just dotting some of that back in, dotting the bit of shadow back in just to alter that a little bit. Okay, now back to the, the really bright layers here. Now we're getting very close to the the brightest, the, the structure of this tree. Again, lovely, fast, loose marks. And you might find when you're starting to do this that it just takes you a little bit longer or that your, your marks are, are too precise for what you want or you might want them to be really perfect leaf shapes. And of course, all of that is just fine and just wonderful. But using this kind of technique of the layering from the dark to the light will just save you loads of time, but it would help you as well understand what you're looking at, how to recreate that in any, any style that you want. So thinking about this, I've still got this idea of a nice light bit here as this bulges out. brightness through there and always always being able to stand back and look at the work and if there's an area that pops out to you or an area you keep looking at it's usually because it doesn't make sense to, the, to your brain your brain's trying to work out well if the light is from this certain source well why is that dark or why is that light so always trust your eye if something doesn't look right it probably isn't when you're working in realism and it's just a case of understanding well how do I then change it and always look at the shapes of light and shade the scale those are really important elements okay as you can see some of my marks are getting a little bit smaller a little bit more scratchy as the, the leaves get a bit closer maybe there's just a few just sticking out there. So that's looking like quite a sculptured sort of bulb, isn't it? Perhaps this area here is standing out a little bit more. Let's make some of them a little bit more spiky. Okay, now how's that looking from a distance? All right, the one bit that my eye keeps looking at is that. And you see those stripes there? Remember how I said the eye loves a pattern? So I'm just gonna break that up. Maybe there's a little bit too much light there and I need to put a bit of dark back in. Okay, now for the final steps, and I always say to my students, 
if you're in my classes regularly, you know what's coming. Push the light. Always go a little bit lighter than you think you want to go because the additional areas of light will suddenly make it completely pop out. And what I'm doing now is I'm just carrying on round because the, the paint underneath, the layers of paint are still wet, I'm just mixing in some of those darker tones with some of this lighter tone, bringing, scratching in a little bit, bringing back some of those darker shades and to get an impression of slightly smaller marks, slightly thicker uh, bush of canopy happening here. Now what I'm going to do before the next layer is I'm actually just going to dry this with a hairdryer. So the next layer will go on as being very bright and not then interfering with the green layer that's underneath because I want to make sure that it really does stand out really brightly. Okay, so back in a second. Hello, back again, miracle of technology. Now I have a slightly drier picture. And I've also been able to have a little look at it from a distance and I can see that maybe I need a little bit more of the, the mid green under there just to fill in slightly. But first of all, I'm going to work on my really bright light. Now, this is where you want to really go for it with a little bit of green, a little bit of your lime green that you had earlier, lots of yellow and lots of white, because there are some leaves that are just so sunny where the, the light is catching them. And I want to put those in because I know it's really going to push these and just make them pop out beautifully. So sometimes you just gotta be really brave with, with how far the light goes. So again, starting at the, the, the top, at the outer edge, and I'm going to do smaller marks now, because these are, of course, these are far away. And just putting a little bit on. Just putting that little bit of brightness, always thinking where's the light coming from, which would be, so maybe there'd be a few leaves that are leaning out here, which are just catching a bit of light. And when you first put this on, it might feel really extreme. But remember, of course, that acrylic dries slightly darker and you want to have just some really sunny, bright areas. Of course, if you're dealing with an autumn scene, you'd be looking at all kinds of oranges through to your, your bright, bright yellows. In this, any, of course, any kind of even if you're uh, dealing with flowers, um, kind of garden scene, 